thanks for coming so early. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, I think we should start on time. Then we have more time to actually look at more video and so on. And we can also uh, share our opinion. I think nobody is right, nobody is wrong. But we just share our individual's uh, opinions and then we learn from each other. Okay, uh, this afternoon I was organizing the all the things that I want to present tonight. Then I saw this one. You know what actually happened now is Google's, you know, after the emergency uh, executive uh, direction from the uh, directive uh, from uh, Trump, Google the one company was immediately responded to this saying that you know they will comply with the, the so called uh, emergency executive so that they will actually cut off uh, Huawei from that. And uh, since then uh, in fact three days after that the announcement then uh, Trump actually uh, announced that they will give ninety days for China to actually Actually, it is not really meant for Huawei. It's actually meant for those people, you know, the 4G uh, network that actually uh, running in the whole country. They are all using Huawei's uh, equipment. And those people, those uh, are telco that are actually operating on all those networks and so on. They say if you suddenly cut off, we don't have any arrangement, you know. The Huawei technicians are here, the engineers are here, and they do all the upgrading. It's a continuous process and so on. And they are also like to change some software and so on. And if you cut off like that, then how <laughs> they really panic. The whole country will be eventually uh, shut off the, all the all the 4G network. So that was the reason that Trump, after three days, uh, to say that, you know, uh, they were delayed for three days and then give them 90 days grace. That was actually the, the background. But then uh, Google's now actually find that they actually, uh, you know, all this kind of thing is actually interrelated, you know. And nobody is actually a winner, actually. When you come to quarrel and so on, then you're going to actually cut off from each other. There will immediately a lot of consequences, you know. And the, whole business world, you know, international phone call, everything is all actually affected. So that is exactly the situation. So what we, uh, this, uh, Google is actually now in this, uh, this uh, request, is actually to get Google's uh, exempted from the list. The reason is, no, there are millions of these uh, Huawei same phone now actually circulated in the US market. A lot of people are using Huawei things and so on. At the moment that they don't get the update, uh, of, 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 of course, they actually promise that they will be getting the update until the new batch of uh, Huawei product, they will not be supported by Google. The present batch that you are already in use, you continue until I think probably until the, the two years or, or after the uh, sort of uh, mobile phone they actually phase out after two years or something. But actually, in, in overseas, yeah, a lot of countries actually not in Singapore. We, in Singapore, we actually have a 24 months kind of uh, contract, you know, and then you get a replacement. A lot of countries actually, they buy their own phone and so on, and they, they actually use it certainly more than two years. So anyway, because of the updating and so on, then Google say, argue that they you don't. Know, for that reason, actually, it creates a red threat for the whole country because if these people cannot get the update on the uh, patches for the uh, security uh, patch, then they will become a loop post for the uh, hacker to actually come in. So I think now you can see the complications now. <laughs> you know. So now Trump is of course will scratch his head again. <laughs> yeah. And he is actually facing with a lot of this kind of in this kind of thing, you know, yeah, uh, because of the, the trade war and so on, you know, yeah. So, okay, tonight we're just talking about security, yeah. So, this is actually uh, the news uh, came in. 
go from 90 days to 900 days. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I think uh, before I start, uh, I just actually, you know, the thing actually uh, sort of, uh, how do I say, unfolds so fast, you know. Actually, last year about this time, it was actually uh, middle of July, I gave the first talk on the 5G network. Uh, the reason was actually, I noticed that the 5G standard, after Almost in both in, uh, 10 years, then they finalized actually on the finals uh, sort of acceptance of the so called network specification, the standard adopted by this uh, organization which I put up here, uh, the G 3GPP, uh, which is actually stand for the uh, the third generation partnership project and so on. This partnership are actually talking about all those people who are actually imposing the development of the network standard, the telecoms <coughs> operator who are actually uh, also uh, you know, involved in the rollout and do all the actually actual running of the 3G network. And then of course, the manufacturer of all the mobile phones. So basically, these are the people not government officer. This is purely an academics and uh, organization, non-profit making in the sense. They only make the, you know, whoever actually contribute, they will actually lock in their so-called pattern. And uh, for that, they will actually, of course, uh, after the rolling out of, this, of, the, of the network, whoever want to actually uh, sort of uh, take a chip to actually run on these uh, three G uh, specifications, then they have to pay the royalty for all these uh, committee member or their uh, company that actually has applied for the patent. So, so that is actually the, the, the reward they actually get, uh, you know. So, during that time, uh, after the, the talk, I was actually expressing actually I, I was actually uh, sort of sensing that something not quite right actually because I actually mentioned that for the 5G standard China actually uh, have two companies, actually three companies Jack D, Huawei and the other one is actually Lenovo they actually represented the uh, in the uh, committee actually because they were the active uh, uh, involvement in the uh, you know especially Jack TE who are actually really making a lot of equipment server and so on for running the uh, mobile network and uh, they don't go out of course they, they have the uh, they are making the uh, mobile phone mainly under the brands of the uh, Motorola they bought the Motorola from uh, Microsoft years ago Okay, so that was actually the background. And then, uh, then last year after the uh, YG talk, I was talk, talking about the trade war because it started to service out that you know, there are some conflict already with the uh, Huawei and then Jack DE. It started with Jack DE first. Yeah. And then Jack DE was actually uh, being sort of blackmail and then they actually had to reorganize and then put in new people in the management and so on. There were a lot of restrictions. But until now, it's still not yet resolved. Okay, so for this uh, 5G network uh, with the Huawei uh, kind of thing, I think. I think as I mentioned just now, it will be very big, very difficult to actually to say who is right, who is wrong. But I think certainly somebody is actually 
not because of the networking and somebody has to actually kill the, 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 uh, the commercial company by all the means and more, all the kind of uh, funny uh, sort of regulation to actually uh, do that kind of things. And then uh, the whole world is actually, at this moment, you can say that they are trapped in the uh, 4G network that was all set up by Huawei for the last, I think, I think uh, 4G network was actually introduced 10 years ago. So I think it was as early as probably 8, 9 years ago, they already uh, uh, using Huawei network and so on. And they have no problem actually up at this stage. Yeah. Okay, so that is actually the background. I thought I have to introduce this first. So tonight what I'm trying to actually uh, sort of uh, present to you is we start off by looking quite 5G again. I think last year I actually showed many actually uh, of the uh, videos about comparison of 4G, 5G and then the evolutions of the 1G, 2G for all the way up to 5G and so on. But tonight I think I will actually uh, just Go back and then uh, look at one of the old videos and uh, you know, just for, for the people that for, who did not actually uh, enter the CEO's talk. Okay. okay, this is the one actually, probably the moment you see, I think you will. Actually, Every new generation of wireless networks delivers faster speeds and more functionality to our smartphones. 1G product. Every new generation of wireless networks delivers faster speeds and more functionality to our smartphones. 1G brought us the very first cell phones. 2G let us text for the first time. 3G brought us online, and 4G delivered the speeds that we enjoy today. But as more users come online, 4G networks have just about reached the limit of what they're capable of at a time when users want even more data for their smartphones and devices. Now we're headed toward 5G, the next generation of wireless. It will be able to handle a thousand times more traffic than today's networks, and it will be up to ten times faster than 4G LTE. Just imagine downloading an HD movie in under a second, and then let your imagination run wild. 5G will be the foundation for virtual reality, autonomous driving, the Internet of Things, and stuff we can't even yet imagine. But what exactly is a 5G network? The truth is, experts can't tell us what 5G actually is, because they don't even know yet. But right now, there are five brand new technologies emerging as the foundation of 5G. Millimeter waves, small cells, massive MIMO, beamforming, and full duplex. First up, technology number one, millimeter waves. Your smartphone and other electronic devices in your home use very specific frequencies on the radio frequency spectrum, typically those under six gigahertz. But these frequencies are starting to get more crowded. Carriers can only store so many bits of data on the same amount of radio frequency spectrum. As more devices come online, we're going to start to see slower service and more dropped connections. The solution is to open up some new real estate. So researchers are experimenting with broadcasting on shorter millimeter waves, those that fall between 30 and 300 gigahertz. This section of spectrum has never been used before for mobile devices, and opening it up means more bandwidth for everyone. But there is a catch. <coughs> millimeter waves can't travel well through buildings or other obstacles, and they tend to be absorbed by plants and rain. To get around this problem, we'll need technology number two small cell networks. Today's wireless networks rely on large high-powered cell towers to broadcast their signals over long distances. But remember, higher frequency millimeter waves have a harder time traveling through obstacles, which means if you move behind one, you lose your signal. Small cell networks would solve that problem using thousands of low-power mini base stations. These base stations would be much closer together than traditional towers, forming a sort of relay team to transmit signals around obstacles. This would be especially useful in cities. As the user moved behind an obstacle, his smartphone would automatically switch to a new base station in better range of his device, allowing him to keep his connection. Next up, technology number three, massive MIMO. MIMO stands for multiple input, multiple output. 
Today's 4G base stations have about a dozen ports for antennas that handle all cellular traffic, but massive MIMO base stations can support about 100 ports. This could increase the capacity of today's networks by a factor of 22 or more. Of course, massive MIMO comes with its own complications. Today's cellular antennas broadcast information in every direction at once, and all of those crossing signals cause serious interference. Which brings us to technology number four, beamforming. Beamforming is like a traffic signaling system for cellular signals. Instead of broadcasting in every direction, it would allow a base station to send a focused stream of data to a specific user. This precision prevents interference and it's way more efficient. That means stations could handle more incoming and outgoing data streams at once. Here's how it works. Say you're in a cluster of buildings and you're trying to make a phone call. Your signal is ricocheting off of surrounding buildings and crisscrossing with other signals from users in the area. A massive MIMO base station receives all of these signals and keeps track of the timing and the direction of their arrival. It then uses signal processing algorithms to triangulate exactly where each signal is coming from and plots the best transmission route back through the air to each phone. Sometimes it'll even bounce individual packets of data in different directions, off of buildings or other objects to keep signals from interfering with each other. The result is a coherent data stream sent only to you. Which brings us to technology number five, full duplex. If you've ever used a walkie-talkie, you know that in order to communicate, you have to take turns talking and listening. That's kind of a drag. Today, cellular base stations have that exact same holdup. A basic antenna can only do one job at a time, either transmit or receive. This is because of a principle called reciprocity, which is the tendency for radio waves to travel both forward and backward along the same frequency. To understand this, it helps to think of a wave like a train loaded up with data. The frequency it's traveling on is like the train track. And if there's a second train trying to go in the opposite direction on the same track, you're going to get some interference. Up until now, the solution has been to have the trains take turns or to put all the trains on different tracks or frequencies. But you can make things a lot more efficient by working around reciprocity. Researchers have used silicon transistors to create high-speed switches that halt the backward roll of these waves. It's kind of like a signaling system that can momentarily reroute two trains so that they can get past each other. That means there's a lot more getting done on each track a whole lot faster. We're still working out many of the kinks with millimeter waves, small cell networks, massive MIMO, beamforming, and full duplex. In fact, all of 5G is still a work in progress. It will likely include other new technologies, too, and making all of these systems work together will be a whole other challenge. But, if experts can figure that out, ultra-fast 5G service could arrive in the next five years. Okay, just now that, that uh, video actually explained a little bit on the behavior of the 5G's uh, uh, signal, which is very different from the 4G. It actually mentioned that you know uh, 4G is actually using a lower frequency uh, network. Yeah. And at this moment, uh, the 4G means that actually have a longer wavelength, uh, low, sorry, longer wavelength, but lower frequency, it cannot carry a lot of data. Because it's actually, the amount of data that actually going through is actually very uh, limited. So for that reason, just now you saw that you know, they show it a, a lot of actually equipment, yeah, uh, handphone, and then some of the uh, others are 
kind of uh, devices, they are all, all crammed inside there. They'll find, they'll find the so-called the uh, 4G network. So for that reason, it actually try to actually allocate more weight than for the for the mobile phones uh, section by pushing out the frequency as well. So for that reason, they actually have a, a sort of more bandwidth for the uh, mobile networks uh, using. Yeah. And then uh, at the same time with the higher uh, frequency, in fact, it can accumulate, get more data actually flowing through. Because it's now it's actually very, the frequency is very high. You know, the frequency is actually, uh, you know, determine the signal, the on and off signal, you know. In the uh, so-called, in the digital world, we are talking about the uh, on-off, on-off kind of switching. And that protect will create a whole series of 0, 1, 1, 0, and so on, you know, to make up all the information which are switching at very, very high speed, of course. So basically, that is actually the thing. And the higher frequency is actually towards the, the behavior of the, of the signal will actually behave more like flat. That means they actually go straight. So if there is any obstacle in between, the signal will not go through. And that is what 5G's network is actually facing as compared to 4G. 4G with a longer wavelength, it can penetrate, uh, especially in the forest area or no. It's not. It will not be actually absorbed by the uh, tree or the, the plant and so on. But 5G, when it goes into the jungle, you actually cannot actually uh, the, the signal will actually sort of uh, absorb by the plant, and then it, it will not get through. So that is actually the the, the problem of the behavior of the network. There is, there is something that you just cannot change it because if you study physics and so on, you know, you actually will understand why such a behavior. Yeah. So for that reason, you know, with 5G, uh, when it actually hit the building, you will not go through. So that was the reason that you know, they come up with all the five different technologies. To, to actually overcome the problem of actually broadcasting the uh, network and so on. So we will look into it uh, a little bit more because there are another two videos which I can share it to you. So after looking into this, uh, uh, although tonight we are talking about the security part of it, <coughs> But I actually have to touch on this one and then with two other videos which is most interesting because it's actually not so much talking but they're just using the, the sort of uh, diagram to actually show you how the interactions of different uh, uh, transmission stations and so on. And uh, that will actually give you some idea you know how how much involvement of setting up, you know, how much money and how much uh, time that you require to set up for such a network. And you have to find all the whole lots of transmitter and the, uh, and the uh, receiver to optimize the signal. Otherwise, you will not be able to achieve so, the so-called 5 gigabits per second kind of that was actually the aim that they want to go into that. And 5G actually now determined as the mobile fiber network. You know, the, the presently we can actually go up to uh, 2 GB in Singapore. Uh, 2 GB, the second kind of thing. And uh, in fact, overseas, I think all commercial network, I think they go up to 10. 10 gigs uh, per second <coughs> kind of uh, speed. <coughs> okay, let me look at the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I think I will look at this one. This one is actually um, some repetition of just now that part, but it gives you some more information. So I think let, let us uh, spend a little bit of time to get it.
device uses beam tracking to determine which signal is the strongest and picks it up. That sounds straightforward until you consider the challenges when implementing this in the real world. Take an office building, for example. Even when you have base stations set up on your floor, there are many variables to consider. For instance, metals bounce beams, while concrete absorbs them. So if you're inside a conference room, a base station from outside could potentially shoot a beam in through a wall, hit a metal lamp, and bounce off to your phone. To get this to work reliably enough for public use, there have to be a ton of beams for your phone to track. Not only that, your phone's antenna array has to be built in a way that your hand doesn't completely cover up the receiver at any time. Qualcomm's solution is to have antenna arrays in the opposite corners of your phone. And since many major smartphone brands have announced that they'll be using Snapdragon 5G-capable components for launches in the first half of 2019, this is likely to be the setup for most of the first 5G-ready phones. Not sold? Or not convinced that millimeter waves will be stable enough for sure? Don't panic yet. Just as your phone falls back to 3G when LTE isn't available, 4G will stick around to make sure you remain connected to the internet even if you're not using millimeter waves. Most people won't even have access to 5G immediately. The rollout is likely to begin in cities and spread out to rural areas. And you may need an expensive high-end device to test the new technology at first. Later versions of 5G will also allow things like IoT devices to connect to millimeter waves, as well as allow for use of unlicensed spectrum to increase speeds some more. But eventually, it should become as prevalent as 4G is today. When that happens, it'll be time to think about 6G. Holy crap, what would that be like? The new KFC Saucy Wing. Okay, so I think after the two video, I think more or less you get some idea about about the behavior of the signal and so on and so forth. Yeah. So now uh, let us look into uh, this another area. Let me see. <laughs> Okay, just now I forgot to actually show share with you this one. Let us have a look at this one. This is actually not a video, but uh, just a report of the thing. Now, uh, in my uh, opening, actually, <coughs> I mentioned about the adoption of the uh, 5G specification last year. And actually, I should actually emphasize that it is actually talking about a stand alone specification. Now, why there is actually a stand alone uh, works here? During the uh, development of the 5G network and kind, they were having two approaches. The first approach was actually tap onto the 4G network because a lot of major cities actually have 4G network. 
So they started off by upgrading the 4G network in fields and then running at a higher frequency. But of course, all the sub antenna and so on, they actually have to go into the 5G, able to run the 5G, carry the 5G network, the frequency. So, for that reason, now, these are so called uh, the first step of the uh, not standalone kind of uh, uh, specification. It was in a year earlier, that was not in 2018. Last year, 2018 July, they actually finalized with this standalone uh, network. Before that, I think it was December 2017, six months earlier, they actually also have signed up another network which is actually a non-standalone kind of network which is actually based on, you can see here, uh, this is December, they actually also have finished with another standard which is basically tag onto the 4G network, the LTE, I think, non-standalone versions of the 5G new radio wave. Huh? So they were actually two <coughs> networks. Now why this point is actually getting uh, important at this point of time? Uh, during my opening uh, uh, talk that got just now, I mentioned that in fact, Huawei has been involved in setting up the 4G network for 170 countries in the world. And if we multiply by average three cities in the country, you can actually can imagine that, you know, how much improvement they, they actually have on the 4G network at that time. So for that reason, of course, they want to save save time and save money. So some of the, uh, especially in the America, most of the city already have a 4G network. Yeah, in Singapore, of course, we have 4G network as well, but we are very small in the sense that you know, not many stations actually uh, over the whole country. So what actually happened, you know, all these, can, these uh, people will prefer that they can still make use of the 4G network. And while we have this technology, they actually have a standalone as well as the non-standalone because they already involved in the 4G uh, equipment over there. So for them to actually bring it up to 5G for the city area, it is it is really the peanut for Huawei because it is their own equipment and then they have all the documentation of every city that set up like that. And that is actually the pain now. So those countries now is so reluctant, they are hooked with the 4G networks provided by Huawei. So if now you want to call in another uh, uh, supplier, which are actually only two suppliers are available, which is Ericsson and Nokia. These are the two that actually, you know, that able to actually do it. But again, they don't have financial uh, thing, uh, capacity now to actually expand because Nokia actually are uh, more or less uh, <laughs> diversify when club and then uh, move out already, you know. Yeah. 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 So are the ESTY, right? Yeah. The OS and so on, maybe the OS. So, same thing also Ericsson, they just continue with the uh, so-called 4G uh, server and so on. They don't even set up, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe they are selling it to the uh, Tesco and then they set up the uh, network on 4G. So basically, that was something that, you know, puzzled me, you know. But that also saying that, you know, how bad it is. If a country without a good leader just a span of 8 years, 10 years, the whole country are actually not aware of what the world is actually doing and not really looking forward to exactly what will happen. And that was America. 
You know, America actually, I checked back. Uh, there are so many uh, companies actually involved in network. I think one of the famous ones is Cisco. AT&T has a 4G one, and they call it 5G. Uh, oh, okay, I, 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 <laughs> let, let us look into it. I, sh I actually uh, make a search on the top 10 uh, so-called uh, internet provider. They are Cisco, HP, IBM, uh, AT&T, AT AT operator. Not so much on the operator. They are just like Singtel and Singtel and so on. Uh, they are operated AT and T and then uh, where is the other one? Uh, did they have? Just now it's actually on show. So that was actually the, the situation. You know. I do not know. Before before Trump came in, it was Obama. He was there for two terms, eight years or nine years. Yeah, he was busy with the medical insurance thing. <laughs> <laughs> But being a black also, I think, although I'm uh, not a racist, uh, but he got a lot of obstacles, you know, we cannot get the uh, parliament to actually approve and so on. So that is exactly the situation, you know. So all these things were not overlooked, you know. The world was actually moving on. And then they are, everybody was happy, you know, since China is a world factory, you know. Whoever actually wants the equipment, the hardware, they will go to China, put the order and then they just ship it there. You know. Everybody was happy. Nobody actually kick up any dust. You know. That was exactly the pain now they are actually locking in. You know. yeah. So, when this uh, Trump now actually uh, saying that you know, because of national security reason, any equipment come from China also cannot use. And where are you going to get this equipment? Now they want to actually engage Nokia and Ericsson, you know, to come in quickly fill up, you know. And then uh, they go and they talk to Cisco's uh, CEO and so on. I think there's actually a video of Cisco and so on uh, talking about this uh, 5G thing. So they also actually got stuck. <laughs> because what are you going to do now? Okay, so that is actually the background. Huh? The stand alone and so on. The, the stand alone are actually very important for rural area, which the up to today don't have actually a 5G network, a uh, 4G network. For they don't have 4G network. They, they also don't have actually a broadband. Like Sydney, if you are 20 kilometer from the city, you don't get. Uh, you don't get broadband at all. Your broadband will be ADSL. They don't even have cable. Singapore, I think we have cable. I have a slide that will show it to you. The Singapore progressions of our so-called uh, broadband and so on. You can actually have the master data. So that is exactly the situation. Eh? Okay. So I think I bring you to all the more or less. Eh? Under, have a basic understanding so that you can actually see the next two videos and then I would advise you really uh, pay full attention because it's running very fast but it's actually showing what was the two previous uh, uh, video actually show you that how the actual network and so on the interaction and then how the receiver actually receive it and so on yeah. And then the second one is even more interesting. They give some figures on the amount of actually the time that is involved, the cost is involved. If the, the US or Canada want to actually uh, sort of uh, uh, get another supplier to actually do it, they probably have to wait for five years. And then uh, the so called user, they have to pay seven. 7,000 a year or something like that for a monthly uh, uh, data of 15 gigabyte. So it's a very interesting uh, video. And those uh, videos were actually all made before the uh, confrontations with uh, these uh, trials. Uh,
trade war as well. Because when I look at the release date, it was the early part of uh, 2018. Okay, this is the one that I want to show you later on. Let's go to the You know this stupid program, huh? this software, even I name it in the number, they cannot actually go by number, you know. <laughs> they just go by the time that actually I say that, then you all jump over, up and down. You cannot solve it by, by title or something. Ah, okay, this is the one. This one actually is actually uh, prepared for the Canada's uh, Telecom Authority. So I think they actually make up this one. Um, and uh, at that time, uh, early part of 2018, everybody was actually take it for granted. They already started because uh, because they anticipate that actually uh, the standardization should be actually finalized already middle of the ACC. So they were actually putting up all this, mainly actually for the executive uh, to actually understanding what is a 5G network and so on. Yeah. So let's look at this. Thousands in the crowd are posting, and everyone is competing for the same internet bandwidth. The sheer volume can slow everyone's connection to a crawl. Now imagine that strain when billions of connected devices come online in the next decade. Now these are all the power, cars, huh? Robots and factories, and smart city traffic controls will all need networks that can transmit a lot more data with virtually no lag time. Enter 5G, the fifth generation of wireless technology. Networks today send radio signal. This is why I'm talking about Canada, a typical city. How they are going to actually set up and so on. It's, a, it's a more or less a, a commercial kind of thing, you know, or in the newspaper they actually uh, do it. So these are the main power uh, that actually carry the very high frequency, and then these were actually transmitted out. And there are many of these ones because they need many of these to actually cover every corner of the city. And then after that, uh, they will show you all the smaller one, which is actually at street level. You know, they actually mount with the lampposts everywhere. You know, almost every uh, others uh, lampposts you know, to to be able to cover it. And why they are doing it actually, you know, because of the futures are. Uh, electric vehicle who are actually talking about autonomous uh, kind of uh, without driver and so on you know. so in other words you cannot actually have fixed lines uh, broadband you must have a very high speed 5G network to able to cater for all this yeah. so that is actually the, the, the thing and it will actually cover really the whole country and no longer you know because it just is like Australian city and so on. The population is so little and so on. They cannot go and lay all the uh, fiber optics uh, cable everywhere. Recently, my place actually, they are changing, actually pulling out all the old cable, the coaxial cable from the thing, and then they are putting in all the fiber optics to actually prepare for them. I think if you know a company called Net, NetLink, they actually uh, listed now in the stock market. Maybe you should look into the share price. <laughs> okay. Using large towers or rooftop antennas on the low band of the electromagnetic spectrum. Low frequency radio now waves are low frequency. long distances yeah. and penetrate buildings, making for reliable coverage. But these radio waves can't carry a lot of data. And there's a limited supply of space on the lower band of the spectrum. Now, these are the high speed ones. 5G will make so it higher frequency spectrum millimeter radio waves. 
which can carry huge amounts of data. Millimeter radio waves don't travel well, far and can't the penetrate the buildings, so network antenna. builders need to place many smaller versions of cell towers closer together. Small cells are small radio access nodes that help provide more capacity for overburdened cellular networks. In part to prepare for 5G, many wireless carriers are already installing the technology. 88 small cells are installed throughout the Rogers Center in Toronto, where crowds have been using the faster internet speeds to post their selfies. The 5G network of the future will include a mix of low and mid-band spectrum, as well as millimeter radio waves. Large towers and antennas will still carry signals over long distances, while a web of small cells at lower heights on lampposts, buildings, and even newspaper boxes will keep data-hungry devices always connected. With almost no lag time and consistent reliability, a 5G network should be able to safely support driverless cars, instant sharing of x-rays, and potentially even remote surgery. But before your phone can connect to a 5G network, we will need new radio technologies and new regulations on wireless spectrum. Canadian carriers say they will begin deploying 5G mobile networks around 2020. Okay, so it's a very short video, but actually it gives you a lot of uh, better sort of uh, understanding of the whole things, yeah, the setup. Okay, the next one. Uh, I think it's put up by Wall, Wall Street Journal. Right, this is the one. I think this is the one that actually after the Huawei incident actually uh, surfaced and then they will try to put up this uh, video to let the uh, business people to understand how impossible to actually people like Trump can actually exclude what we out of the uh, network now. Yeah. So it's very interesting. The U.S. has been encouraging allies to restrict Huawei from their telecommunications networks. Security officials say that Beijing could force the Chinese company to spy or even disable the country's networks. So far, Australia and New Zealand have moved to block Huawei in their 5G rollout. But some European countries have hesitated, saying that Huawei equipment is much cheaper. Plus, there's no public evidence that Huawei has or could use its equipment to eavesdrop. But even if allied countries bend to U.S. pressure, it may be nearly impossible to extract Huawei from a country's network where it's already ingrained. Here's why. Countries are rushing to test and roll out 5G networks, seeing that the potential payoffs are immense. The first phase for many carriers will be to upgrade existing 4G networks. That means attaching 5G components to legacy infrastructure. And guess where much of that legacy hardware comes from? Wow. For the first three quarters of 2018, the Chinese company had a 28% share of the global telecom equipment market. Nokia and Ericsson are falling behind. Take a close look at Huawei's presence in each region. Outside of North America, the tech juggernaut outpaces its Nordic rivals. So to take Huawei out of the network, whether it's 4G or 5G, countries first have to replace existing infrastructure provided by the company. That's a big chunk of time and money. Carriers have opposed banning Huawei, pointing to its superior hardware and lower prices. Take a small U.S. rural carrier as an example. James Valley Telecommunications says all of its wireless core network and radios are from Huawei. It says it will cost around $5,000 per subscriber if it has to replace the entire network. Given that it's currently servicing about 10,000 rural customers, the network replacement cost will total $50 million. And it goes beyond just the money. Tawaga Research, a wireless technology research firm, says a typical network replacement cycle takes 5 to 10 years to complete. So even if the U.S. were to ban Huawei and 5G, carriers can still expect that Huawei won't be out of the network immediately. 
Outside of Huawei, Nokia and Ericsson aren't gaining much favor among European carriers. Wireless providers say that they've been slow to release equipment as advanced as Huawei's. Some of Huawei's 5G technology can be up to a year ahead of its Western rivals, according to some senior executives. Huawei's clout in 5G stems from its massive research and development budget. In 2017, Huawei spent $13 billion on R&D, more than its chief rivals combined. The company now owns the most number of standard essential 5G patents in the world. Some of those are now fundamental building blocks to 5G. They include one highly prized technique called polar coding, a method for correcting errors in data transmission. Regardless of whether a country chooses to block Huawei, there's no way to avoid paying royalties to license its 5G technology. With Huawei at the center of the 5G race, governments and carriers aren't ready to abandon it yet. Unlike in the U.S., officials in Germany and the U.K. still believe they can allow some Huawei equipment in their countries. If more countries follow the U.S.'s advice, knocking out Huawei won't be easy. So, <laughs> what is your opinion now? <laughs> After the way, the Singapore system, the 4G is uh, what system? Which country? Uh, okay. I actually make some research on that one. I will come to that. Yeah, I will come to that. That is the reason to today's uh, presentation to me. Hey, they call me. <laughs> I have to go into this. Right sequence. Basically, uh, there are some background of the uh, three telecom companies in Singapore. Although the idea all owned by Tamasic, but uh, yeah, for that reason, uh, they they also using different uh, different service provider. Yeah, correct. Okay, let me see now. We finish. So you can actually see it uh, with the thousand over uh, patterns that have now what we actually register with it. Actually it's registered with the US you know, because they are actually controlling the pattern and so on. So even what we not actually doing anything, they were collecting the money from whoever you see. <laughs> and normally pattern lasts for at least 20 years and you can extend. So for the next 10 years, the money will come in. Whoever wants to achieve, you know. And okay, European country now uh, this uh, Britain with the prime minister just resigned today or yesterday. So I think they were all out to actually continue.